Hello and welcome to the World Cup Minute. My name is Josh. I'm here with Brandon. Brandon, how are you? I'm great, Josh. We are blessed with, in my living memory, the greatest quarterfinals in World Cup Sure. Um, recorded Brandon's memory, so let's yeah. say that. We've just come. Uh, we're hot out of the Black Horse in Park Slope, Brooklyn. And uh, we we arrived uh, an hour before kickoff, and it was already packed to the gills. And I wasn't sure if once the whistle uh, started that it was going to be pro-England or pro-France, Mm-hmm. 60-30, et cetera, yeah. 60 I guess, 10% neutral. Sure. It was wildly pro-England at the Black Horse. Yeah. And I had basically had a side bet going that it was going to be 2-1 France, so I, I sheepishly shrugged. You kept turning to me, Josh, and this is for our UK listeners out there, yeah. to yeah. let you know that you have a friend. Josh, you kept turning to me saying, I think we can do this. And you would say, <laughs> you were continually saying we as, we. we, as yeah. if we were British That's true. citizens. There's a lot of we in that. I, I You know, we, we obviously do a weekly podcast, twice weekly, honestly, with the, with the Patreon pod, uh, about the Premier League. And uh, I, I feel pretty close to the Premier League and, yeah. and the English. You know, it's uh, so close, in fact, that I have strong opinions negatively and positively about the English. <laughs> whereas I, whereas I, I once may have qual- qualified as an Anglophile. Now I have, you know, very deep... Uh, feelings one way and the other, but yeah, I, I, I was feeling pretty. Um, I, I was certainly pulling for England in this match, and I think that the um, I, yeah, we'll, we'll start with this one. Then we'll, then we'll go to the Morocco match afterwards because we, we, we which, just yeah, got which through. is a miracle match in and of itself. Yeah. But uh, yeah. let's let's start with the rec- most recent game in our memory. Yeah. So I think that it was. Uh, it's not a match that England should feel a great shame about, right? I mean, I think that they. It was an extremely competitive match, as we yeah. thought it would be going in. And if Harry Kane scores that pen, it's really hard to say who actually wins that match. To with, you know, but but I will say, even if he scores that pen, it just it just ties things up. And honestly, it feels like maybe France just had a little more even then, right? It's sort of Possibly. it's a part of me that feels like even if it had gone to extra time, France might have found a way to to pull that out. You know, they had like a slightly more attacking quality. There was something in the day where it felt like France had the, you know, the the magic behind them. Yeah. Maybe maybe at moments the referee behind them, even though yeah. uh, I think it's overstated a little yeah. bit. I mean, you know, it's the the, the Saka foul to, to begin with. The Saka has to sell that foul. I'm sorry. Like he has to go down the second there's contact. And you're talking about the foul, the possible foul before uh, the opening goal, the Chuameni yeah. goal. Yes, I agree. But going back to what you were saying about like on the day, what was the balance of play? Watching that those 90 minutes, I felt like six, seven times out of ten, you play that exact same match, England wins. Mm-hmm. I do think that England <clears throat> and you. Tactically, maybe France wants England to have more of the ball, but I think the the criticisms leveraged over the last four or five years against Southgate and this England team is they were a little too conservative. I thought England came out to win this match, and they played really well, and they played yeah. really attacking football. And there were players that had incredible matches, like Declan Rice played well. Jude Bellingham, we have seen greatness yeah. from him this tournament attacking. I thought Bellingham had a great defense. Almost scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. So, um, And Kane, yeah. after that uh, France goal goes in, yeah. you and I, we sort of like, we we got electrified because we could see Kane yeah. understood he had to take over the match. You and we said saw something. That, yeah. What did what did you say about him that like basically like he's really good when he needs to be the the man or whatever? Pretty, like he, ba- yeah, basically, yeah. 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 When yeah. when Kane understands he has to do it, he yeah. has to not that he has to do it all himself, but uh, yeah. and I, I thought you could see a real energy emanating from Kane after the yeah. Chuameni goal went in. And I just like, what else can you ask for from an England performance? They were put in a position to win. Kane bangs in that first pen emphatically in Kane fashion. And you ask him to score another one, it's sort of like then math and probability starts getting involved. And I don't think anyone could could blame Kane uh, on the whole. And uh, it's just... It's a bummer to go out like that, but I. But then going back to how you had kind of initially positioned it, Josh. And France played extremely well, yep. and they, you know, they they set up to play their own game plan. And Giroud was, in a sense, inevitable. 
in yeah. this match. Like yeah. it was sort of like he was weirdly quiet until <laughs> yeah. it all started going off. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like it's a luxury for them, right? Like you know, in, in, in England's case, they need Harry Kane to do everything, right? Like there's a moment where Harry Kane won a foul, like on the far left side of the pitch, right? Like on the defensive end of the pitch, yeah. and it was like Giroud never has to do that for France, right? Giroud yeah. would never to fall that far back, and you know, because the fullbacks are not, not the fullbacks, but the, the wingers are so good. Um, I mean, Griezmann had a great game, uh, yeah. and Mbappe was fine. Maybe not his, you know, most dominant yeah. game, but yeah. certainly, uh, you know, as you were saying when we were watching that match, it was, you know, he, he creates space for that opening goal. Yeah, um, that that allows uh, was it too many? Is that you say? Too Chou, many. Too many. Yeah. He, uh, and Mbappe receives the ball, holds the ball, creates the possession, yeah. and then runs into. Sp- it, it's it's interesting. It is yeah. Mbappe's goal to a degree, but I think he should get he should get that goal. It should, <laughs> it should be, be yeah, yeah, he should yeah. be on six for the for the golden <laughs> boot for sure. But no, I think Griezmann was the man of the match. I thought he was yeah incredible and yeah. such an engine yeah. for for France. It's a heartbreaker for England though, and you have to wonder if maybe I mean I, I think I, I don't know. We talked about this a little bit yesterday with Brazil. It's like you know, can you? Sometimes you just run into a team and it's just one match. You know, you're not playing ten of them in a row, so mm-hmm. you maybe shouldn't draw super deep conclusions. But there is a feeling I felt a little bit that, like you know, Kyle Walker was keeping them, you know, or he was keeping um, Mbappe, Mbappe in check, mm-hmm. which you know, to hit, credit to him. But ultimately, that was at the sacrifice of Kieran Trippier, right? Who has been absolutely terrific for for um, uh, for Matt Newcastle United, and, and you know, you kind of wonder if. A more open attack than I mean at this point, like I think it's fair to criticize not not necessarily criticize, but just offer a different yeah. tactical vision, right? Because they did lose. And so is there a version of that squad yeah. that starts Kieran Trippier that wins? Because they're just kind of maybe they win three one or something like that, right? They just have they they can or the three two. They concede more goals, but they also score more. And they kind of mm-hmm. I felt like they lacked at times a playmaker. They they won two pens, which is to their credit, but it wasn't like they had somebody in that kind of playmaker, like a Griezmann role, ultimately, right? Yes. Like, you know, who just kind of created chances for them. And it was, you know, Kane was really the one who was doing that. And I, I saw people on Twitter say that Foden was, you know, was was one of the better players. I, I, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I felt like he was he was fine, but I, I don't feel like, uh, I, I don't know. It feels like they needed somebody to, like, sit a little further deep, like, and, yeah. and create some chances for I, I wouldn't focus on Kyle Walker. I thought he had a good game. He he did his job. He contained Mbappe. Yeah. He had some great t- tackles on Mbappe and yeah. a few runs going forward. I do think Jordan Henderson is the guy I would look to right. for a different and maybe so more maybe, attacking approach. Jordan yeah. Henderson had a cliche Jordan Henderson match where right. virtually all of his passes were going sideways but more backwards. And that was... So maybe it's like a three-five-two with Kyle Walker as the left... <laughs> As the, as, yeah. the, as the right center back, yeah. and you have Trippier uh, as the right wing back, and then it's a it's a t- kind of two man midfield, right, with Bellingham and Stones or uh, uh, Bellingham and Rice, and then that allows Trippier to to, to basically I'm, I'm saying swap in Trippier for yeah. Henderson, and does that change? No, game? I think Mount. I think you stay four at the back, and Mason Mount comes in for Jordan Henderson, mm-hmm. and Mountain is a bit a bit more progressive, yeah. but. This is, I think this is like armchair quarterbacking. As I said, I think England's lineup was fine. I thought England's performance yeah. was fine. It just happened that they were unlucky and didn't win. I thought they came with the right lineup and the right tactics. And kind of on the whole was this, I, I mean, there is a way to look at this match where England is the better team. And they, and yeah, they, and it's they just, lose. It's just hard to say because when, when, when France scores early... It changes their entire plan, yeah. right? So if that match is nil nil for the first sixty five minutes, we may have a different sort of sense of England or of France. Like, yes. but once they score the first goal, there's really no reason for them to expose themselves. And yeah. so, of course, England's going to look a little bit better because they're going to be on the front foot trying to get the equalizer. Yeah. You know, there was this, there was something you know. interesting France was doing where, particularly late in the game, even when they had a one goal lead at two one, they refused to just like retain the ball in the back. They like Loris chucks the ball from you know their half into uh, England's eighteen, and you could see, and I think you mentioned this yesterday, Josh, in our preview of this match, how France doesn't really have like a a classic midfield. Okay. France is either defending or attacking, 
Right. And I think that's ultimately what won France the match is when they were attacking, they were like full-blooded attacking. And England ultimately yeah. had more of an organic, composed system. And they just didn't score yeah. the goals. And that's kind of what, yeah. what happened. And maybe balance is overrated, right? I mean, Japan, mm-hmm. would, Japan would say as much, right? They had two matches that they won in the World Cup where they barely had possession, right? Mm-hmm. And, they, and they won both of them. So um, this is something that you see in the NFL a lot, too, where they're like, well, you know— X team should have won, right? They had they, they controlled the ball for 42 minutes of the match out of 60, and it's like, well, yeah. you know, it's like a it, it just doesn't it, possession doesn't necessarily equal um, a, a actual dominance, right? In terms of um, kind of output, sure. Um, so yeah, so I, I think I think you're I, I ultimately agree with you though. I mean, I think it's it's interesting to talk about tactics because uh, because they lost, and and it's it's fun to think about what, what? might have yeah. gone differently. Sure. But I, I ultimately agree. Your with great you that. Marvel Cinematic Universe trope of the what if. I exactly. This is a what if. You know, what if? Uh, uh, I didn't even really know. But I always had a couple. of actually they aren't bad. But it's. Uh, I loved the comics when I was a kid. It's a great mm-hmm. idea for for comics. So, um, so yeah, France is through. Congrats to them. It's a fun team. I was rooting for England. I had a, I had a bet on England uh, to win the World Cup that I have I have lost. I did hedge yeah. it a little bit with a with a with a goal with a bet today that that came through. So there there was I, I did an emotional hedge today, uh, but it yeah. was uh, nobody had Chuam any first time goal scorer. No, no, nobody had that sadly. Yeah. But I think it, this this is not a team that that I find easy to hate. I basically like this French sure. team, and I really love Giroud, and I always have. I mean, you and I both I think are, are in the Giroud fan club, and yes. um, going back to his uh, Arsenal days when he joined from Definitely. Saint. I think that's who he joined from, and, and no, Mont- Montpellier. That's who he won. He won. He won a league title with Montpellier before. Who could he, forget? Yeah. Well, that was like that was like the last time that PSG didn't win. You know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for you know, for a long time at least. And so, um, yeah, I we love Giroud. Uh, Mbappe is easy to love. Uh, I thought Rabiot was was terrific. Uh, yeah, had some really great moments today. You, my, one might say he was a bit rabid. He was uh, rab rabido. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just a, you know, so it's a fun team. I'm really excited about uh, well, we get the semifinals now, which is we have uh, Fran- uh, we have, we have Argentina, Croatia, and at this point, I guess like Croatia, like has to be like lightly favored. <laughs> like I don't know. Like, Basically, who's beating give, them. Give like, the trophy. Yeah. Give the trophy to Croatia. They're they're. Would you say they're too tough? I I have I will I will I've been banging on about the toughness thing and I, I just like prove me wrong like wait until someone actually like proves me wrong there. So the, the, yeah. it it is like a weird it's like a Madden curse this World Cup and yeah. I, uh, so it, for those who don't play Madden NFL on a video game platform uh, 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 console the curse is if you're the famous player who gets on the Madden video game cover that you're, you're going to have a bad season in the NFL. And that seems to be the way it's going in this world cup. If you have an emphatic win a la Portugal, you're going to lose the next game. (laughs) So, so I guess there were no truly emphatic wins coming out of the quarterfinals. Absolutely not. So not not, not one, (laughs) that is why these quarterfinals were uh, just, Spectacular. Nothing. Absolutely. Nothing will beat that that Beghurst goal. That was one of the most dramatic moments yeah. that you will ever see in a World yeah. Cup, and it doesn't so, doesn't matter they didn't win. Yeah. So no extra yeah. time today, which yeah. which uh, brings us to uh, Portugal Morocco. Yeah. And what was, would you say about that game? I mean, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> I was. It was beautiful. I, I was convinced that Portugal was going to equalize just because you know you know what made me feel confident was I thought that Bruno was having a really great match, and I felt like he was doing. Really, the thing about Bruno that I like, and this is one of the reasons I like watching him play, even though I'm not a Man United supporter, is he makes unusual choices. Like uh-huh. the the things that he does in a match are just like he doesn't kind of, I don't know. He just like you know he zigs when you think he's gonna zag or whatever. Like you know, he's creative. Yeah, he's creative. I guess that's what I mean. He's just creative. And so it's you know I thought that his creativity combined with and ultimately they almost got there. I mean, you know, Joe Felix had some moments, and I, I'm starting with Portugal. I'm not really sure why here, but I guess, I guess just because they're of that match. So European a, snobbery, that's what's yeah, going on here. We had a tight opening 45, right? And then, then uh, honestly, a bit of a howler. Can we admit that it was a bit of a howler on the... Uh, <laughs> on, on the, the El Nasri goal? Yeah, on the El Nasri goal. I mean, you know, I think that um, uh, he kind of redeemed himself later. I thought he had some really nice uh, stops, but ultimately... You gotta come and claim that goal, right? That is yeah. not that is that is not a goal that uh, that Ederson would have conceded. Let's say, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, f- fair enough. Um, 
And I think, but I think the goal is one thing, but then it's the sort of like how we were trying to judge England, France on balance of play right. and who was the better side on the day. Right. I do think the way Morocco was able to control that match, and this this is the way you, you win tournaments. You've got to ride your luck a bit. They got that goal. Yeah. And the beauty of Morocco is they knew exactly what to do in that situation. Yeah. And I think they defended really well. And the mistake that Santos made for Portugal is sadly, I think, bringing Ronaldo on. Because as soon as Ronaldo comes on, the tactics become very clear. Chuck it into the box for Ronaldo yeah. to get on the end of it. I think the yeah. one, probably the there was the Jao Felix um, uh, shot on target maybe in like the 85th minute. Created by Ronaldo. Nice great great, great layoff from Ronaldo. We'll grant him that. And then there was the uh, Bernardo, uh, the Bruno Fernandez through ball that uh, that uh, Ronaldo latched onto. One on one with the keeper. I mean, yeah, you and gotta, you got to ding him for that one a little bit. Uh, uh, possibly, but I I just think. Morocco understood, here's what's going to come at us, and yeah. we're just going to throw up a brick wall. And they they did. They played great defense, great great uh, goalkeeping. And I, yeah, you mentioned like how Morocco yesterday, they kind of come into the quarterfinals as the home team. Yeah. And uh, they had a huge amount of support, tremendous support. And I was going to meet you in Brooklyn coming down from Harlem, and I was late because I couldn't resist just watching the broadcast as the Moroccan team parades around the field celebrating yeah. because it was like, and we you see this in any World Cup, you know, the the team that uh, uh, perpetrates the upset, yeah. I guess we could say, like just to see a team in that situation beam with pride and joy, it was really great. And so, all credit to Morocco. I'm very excited to see the first ever. African nation yeah. progress to the semifinals in a World Cup. It's super cool, and I hope that I hope that Sace is healthy for the semis. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had to obviously get taken off the the pitch, but I think you know even even with Hakimi and Ziyech alone give you a kind of top level class yeah. that I think it means they can compete with 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 kind of anybody. I and mean, you know, and their defense the defense has been so organized. I, I think that I, I actually think I got a little bit lucky um, near the end of this match because I think that Portugal probably should have equalized yeah. and. And if they equalize, certainly when it got to the ten men, then I think that you know, I don't know what would it get would it get on ten men if they had equalized? It's hard to say, right? But like it's sort of um, the way that it worked out. It's it's I, I I don't know. Credit to Morocco. Ultimately, they didn't concede. It was you know I think you have to give them credit for their for their game plan. Ultimately, they've only conceded one goal in the World Cup, and it was on a it was an own, <laughs> an goal. own goal. Yeah, Incredible. so uh, yeah. let's give them all credit, and uh, I hope that Sace is able to play the semis. I think that. Um, I think with, with both these semifinal matches, which, are, which take place on Tuesday and Wednesday, you uh, would expect Argentina and France to win. But we are kind of beyond the realm of expectation. Stop now. predicting. Yeah, stop, stop predicting. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I think that um, I think that I would have to give uh, both the two the you know the, the two squads that are playing in the yeah. semifinals that are their underdogs are a strong chance of actually advancing to the finals. And I think a Croatia Morocco final is not. Completely outside the realm of possibility. Yes. yes, yes, and I love that. I guess like I've come to love both the Croatian and Moroccan teams. This is like who is there anybody out there who filled out a bracket? And this is a NCAA college basketball tournament bracket busting yeah. World Cup. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? Those are the best NCAA tournaments for sure. So, like, who cares? Like, stop predicting what you think is going to happen. I think the broadcasters around the world would be foaming at the mouth for the Messi, Messi versus Mbappe sure. final. The of sort of, like, old guard, new guard yeah. thing. And there would be lots to write about there. Uh, but also maybe the, the hipsters, the purists would say, you know what, let's just do Croatia, Morocco. I mean, it's a World Cup final, right? It kind of doesn't matter. Who's it doesn't the matter. It's gonna be. It's gonna be great. Yeah. It's gonna be a great match, no matter yeah. what. The, and it's gonna be a great semis um, for. Dip, I think pre, be prepared. These semis are going to be great, but for totally different reasons. I get, I would expect yeah. that the quarters were the quarters were just wild, unpredictable for yeah. just like free flowing crazy chaos. Yeah. And the semis inherently will be a little tighter, more defensive. Because the stakes are just ratcheted yeah. up that much, 
Just depends. Yeah. Really, it just depends on really you know it, the, the 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 you know any team scores in those those two games. I think that's really gonna dictate everything. So really excited. It's it was fun to watch the match today. Uh, it was fun to be at the Black Horse, which is where you and I watched it in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know, you know if anyone listening was able to go to a bar or a restaurant or with some friends and watch with lots of people. But I, ha- you know, this is kind of the, outside of the U- the opening U.S. match for the World Cup. It's the first time I've been in a gigantic, super crowded, super engaged, had to stand for three hours bar, yeah. and uh, I really enjoyed it. It was really fun, and you know, it, it, there's something about the excitement of those matches. Like you don't even feel your legs. Like there's just yeah. no. You don't get you don't get tired. It's just it's just fun to be there watching these yeah. games. I could tell in the Black Horse the true England heads who like in the eighty fifth minute were just like elbowing to get to the bar. They're like, I need a drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is not about yeah. collegiality yeah. Yeah. anymore. I, I was surprised what a, a full on English homer I was in that the second half of that match. I was we, really we. home for England. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. We'll be, we'll take a couple days off. Uh, you know, for any for the FPL heads out there, we're gonna get back. I suppose, Brendan, we really have no choice but to. Uh, I, I say no choice. I mean, we're looking forward to it, but it's. <laughs> I, I think I have turned off my fantasy brain for the last month yeah. or so. Uh, you know, because I don't think there's any reason to really think about uh, fantasy from really too deeply. Um, because uh, well, I mean, for one thing, everyone has limited transfers going into the start of the next. Uh, you know, in, in the start of the the Boxing Day matches. And I want to see who's available, right? Yes. Like, you know, why why think about it two weeks ago when we didn't know that Kevin De Bruyne was going to be back? Yeah. Now England is 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 eliminated. That means that right now Harry Kane, Bakker, you know, and, and soccer, et cetera, have sixteen days before the start. Do they need more than two and a half weeks off? I don't know. You know, it's sort of they would in the summer because they would have played a whole season. But yes. where where are they now? So I think there's they're bas- they basically have played what they probably the same number of minutes. Yeah. Um, oh, as they would have playing Premier League and plus Champions League, I yeah. guess you, you yeah. could say. Yeah. You, you can build into the into that equation for the Premier League and club yeah. fantasy, yep. the stress of travel and the emotional yeah. um, um But it's a weird toll. thing. Yeah, I saw like Harry uh, Antonio scored a goal for West Ham today, I saw. You know, all these clubs are starting to play friendlies. I mean, the, the, yeah, the yeah. joke's on you if you were watching England-France and not West Ham today. Yeah, West Ham's friendly, exactly. Uh, but the championship was back today. They had a full slate of matches today, I saw. And uh, yeah. I believe there are Carabao Cup matches coming up. If not, I care about it. Yeah, you care about it. And so I think those are coming up, if not this coming week, then early the next week. So mm-hmm. uh, the Premier League is going to be back before you know it. We are going to start, for anybody, I don't know how many people listening to us have, are, are new listeners, but Brandon, we're going to start a second half league, just so that everybody who has gotten into the World Cup, who's never been a World Cup fan, mm-hmm. wants to watch the Premier League, which is a spot I found myself in uh, in 2010, and I want to be able to give those people uh, a chance to, to join a, a fresh fantasy sure. league and not feel like they're coming in completely late. So, totally. Um, so that we'll, we'll start that, and that'll start on Boxing Day, which is December 26th, so keep your eyes out for that. But thanks to everyone for listening. We'll be back uh, after the semifinal match on Tuesday. Bye bye. Bye. There you go. There you have Stop it. Stop being. <laughs>